hey youtube fam welcome back to our channel i'm your host and today we've got a topic that's making waves globally namibia is taking a bold stand against germany and you won't believe what's fueling the fire stick around as we unravel the international implications and explore what people are saying on the internet now before we dive in let's rewind a bit did you know that on this day in history in 1904 in germany's southwest africa now known as namibia a rebellion broke out amongst the pastoralist population of herero the aftermath was nothing short of a tragedy leading to a full-blown genocide that lasted until 1908 fast forward to today and namibia is holding germany accountable for the mass and aliving of its people but hold on that's not all the Namibian president via Twitter has entered the ring delivering a knockout blow to Germany's defense of the blue and white nation. It's a social media showdown and Namibia is not pulling any punches. Get ready for a wild ride folks. Remember if you are enjoying this content don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Let's get the conversation started. I'm not shocked that Germany is trying to interfere with the ICJ case. We've seen some countries, you know, mainly in the West speak out against the case, but Germany's the first one to actually try to interfere. But baby, Namibia said, uh-uh, y'all ain't pulling this. The side you carried out in our country. You even got the first lady of Namibia calling Germany out. The absurdity of Germany on 12 January 2024 side charges against Israel and warning about the political instrumentalization of the charge is not lost on us. Ciao. I have a feeling so many countries are going to come forward and be like, this you, when it comes to any country trying to still try to back up Israel, this we're so far in the point where other countries are like, enough's enough. And after what the U.S. and other Western countries kicked off in Yemen, and we're finding out what countries, you know, came on versus what others rejected, this is not going to end well for anybody still trying to back Israel. Namibia. Namibia says, oh, no, 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 Germany. You don't have no business getting into this. Now, listen to this. All of the ironies in this case are incredible, right? Number one, South Africa, a nation that was colonized for hundreds of years, went through a regime taking a case of G-side against Israel, right? Formed in part due to the cost, right? Now you have Germany jumping in and saying, oh, no, no, we're the country, right? That perpetuated the age cost against the Jewish people. They're jumping in in defense of Israel. Now, Namibia, if you don't know the irony with Namibia, Namibia was colonized by Germany. Now, to Germany's credit, Germany has said, hey, yes, we did commit a G-side in Namibia, but we do not feel Israel is committing a genocide in Gaza. Unbelievable, a lot to unpack. Germany came out with their full chest to support Israel in the International Court of Justice. And guess what? Namibia, okay, came out condemning Germany for defending Israel. And you know why? Because Namibia has exposed um, Germany for committing the first in the 20th century towards their people which most of us don't even know about because they covered it up and they still refuse today. Germany refused to take accountability for the people, a hundred thousand people that they have unalived in Namibia. When I tell you this year is the year of revelation, the year of exposure, God is not playing with none of this period. Namibia against the indigenous Heri Hero and Nama peoples between um, 1904 and 1908 committed towards the Namibian people and thank God this thank God Namibia for coming out and opposing Germany this is what we need to do this people these have gone through every ends of every part of the world and committed all kinds of so many group of people and it's about time for everyone to be closed and namibia has been trying to get them to take accountability and pay at to pay for what they have done rations and all no they don't want to do it they don't want to do it they have been literally ignoring namibia refusing to take accountability and it's about time for them to be exposed for what they have done. So we all know the situation that Germany came out yesterday in support of Israel. And this breaking news is Namibia rejects Germany's support against innocent civilians in Gaza. So why might Namibia be against Germany supporting Israel, you might ask? Well, let me tell you. Well, it's because Germany were the first country to commit against the Namibians 
in the beginning of the 20th century. As you can see from the images here, they're pretty seen here continues. The German government is yet to fully atone for the it committed on Namibian soil. Therefore, in light of Germany's inability to draw lessons from its horrific history, President expresses deep concern with the shocking decision communicated by the government of the Federal Republic of Germany yesterday on the 12th of January, in which it rejected the morally upright indictments uh, brought forward by South Africa before the International Court of Justice. Namibians, considering what they then went on to do in the Second World War, that's quite shocking, but obviously there's more to it. Of course, Germany is supporting Israel, right? Because if the state of Israel were to fall, all those Jewish people have to go back to where they came from. And a whole lot of them are German from Germany. And Lord knows Germany doesn't want the people back. Because if the Jewish people come back using the same claims to ancestry to Germany that a lot of them do have, because remember why Jewish people were displaced from Germany in the first place? Then those Jewish people who were displaced because of the non- would demand their homes back that were stolen from them, and Germany will never give those back. Not ever. They want Jewish people back in their country. And that's where they're defending Israel, make no mistake. <laughs> this whole situation is so embarrassing and so tragic. Like, Jewish people in Israel are literally being played for f I think Germany are really embarrassing themselves here. I had a good German friend that I spoke with not long ago who said, we talked about the issue before Lukau, about how you know the reparations hit the Germans hard after the second and how she talked about when she was growing up how they just weren't allowed to discuss it they were taught in school that they you know that the Israeli Israel were had to be supported at all costs you had to uh, support Jews at all costs and you were not allowed to criticize or have any alternative view so Namibia has entered the chat. Namibia has entered the chat. Why is this important? Because Germany decided to open its long throat and talk about, oh, well, we're going to support Israel with what's, it, what, what's happening because it's not Germany. You would know all about that, wouldn't you? Of all people that would know that would be in the bag, it would be Germany, wouldn't it? And it seems on the surface like, rah, why are they getting involved? They're getting involved because of what they did to Namibia. So what have uh, the place in Namibia between like 1904 and 1908 is considered the first um, of the 20th century imagine the first century like it's top of the pops but it's important to note it because a lot of things that then took place in Germany in the 19 what from the 19 late 1930s through to the 1940s um, in terms of the cost the ideas were being cooked up and upon the Namibian people. So as with most um, African countries that pushed against um, colonial rule, there was retaliation by whether Germany or Britain or Belgium or France or Portugal, um, all of them people there, right? There was, there was pushback. So in this specific case with um, Namibia and Germany, the Namibians pushed back and between 24,000 and 110,000 Namibians result um now look at that dis the the vast disparity in that was it twenty four thousand or was it a hundred and ten thousand i'm pushing for it was over a hundred and ten thousand right so um they did this through a number of means whether it was the namibians in the desert so they didn't have access to water or food or through camps that's where they trialed it first and they the, germany trialed the in Namibia and in 2004 I think it was around 2004 that was when they were like oh yeah we accept that the events happened prior to that they were denying it hmm so they were denying that um 2008 they were like yeah mm, yeah but no reparations are necessary it was only until t it was only and I think it was 2018 or so I could be wrong where they finally gave back the scots of Namibians that they took to Germany as part of their eugenics Right. And then in 2021, I guess as a result of like the um, the global like black movement and all of those things um, as a culmination, they agreed to um, uh, 1.1 billion euros over 30 years to pay for initiatives to help um, communities that would have been affected by this genocide. Um, but that's why they would be worried because if we're looking at what's happened in palestine in just the last few months over twenty-three thousand people have been 
deal with Germany. In a remarkable act of poetic justice, the president of Namibia has called out Germany for pledging their support to Israel at the International Court of Justice. Germany did so to support the notion that they've learned from their wicked sins, but Namibia stepped in to remind them that they never atoned for the they committed against the Herero and Nama people at the beginning of the 20th century. They put out a statement with the title Namibia rejects Germany's support of the general consent of the Israeli state against innocent civilians in Gaza. They continue in saying the German government is yet to fully atone on Namibian soil. Therefore, in light of Germany's inability to draw lessons from its horrific history, the president expresses deep concern with the shocking decision committed by the government of the Federal Republic of Germany yesterday. More, they say that Germany cannot morally express commitment to the UN Convention, including atonement, as they support Israel's genocide. Why is this important? What's happening in Gaza is a classic case of colonial as was the Herero and perpetrated in Namibia when it was German Southwest Africa. One of the core reasons that Western powers like the US, Britain, France, the works cannot call what Israel is doing because that would mean they are required to atone with the own genocide they perpetrated against indigenous peoples during colonization. And using Germany as an example, I wonder why on earth there's been no reckoning for the Berlin Conference. Or why Germany has argued that the convention can't be applied retroactively. That's just, you know, not fair to the people. That and the reason is incredibly clear because, you know, the colonizers got to stick together. Any admission of guilt could make Germany and other former colonial powers liable to claims from other former colonies. In my optimistic opinion, I find this significant because it leaves Germany with, I think, two options. Um, they either just completely ignore the people they genocide, you know, kind of a bad look, not necessarily meaning that they would stop supporting Israel because they're not going to stop supporting Israel. Or they make some kind of minute admission to their colonial sins to be able to maintain at least verbal relations with Namibia. Small problem though, um, I would think or like believe and hope in my heart of hearts that opening up any amount of colonial baggage for inspection would be in Namibia, then you naturally are going to be forced to reckon with Germany want opened. But, but I don't see how Germany responds to this. And I think that's a good thing. Namibia has put their genocidaires into a corner. Now, those were some of the videos and what people had to say about this incident. But what's triggering the recent tension? Namibia is taking a stand against Germany's support for a particular nation's actions. A nation known for its conflict with innocent civilians in Gaza. Namibia's official government statement calls out Germany saying, sit down, we know what you did. This not so subtle response is making headlines and we're here to break it down. Namibia boldly states, Germany committed the first genocide of the 21st century from 1904 to 1908 in which tens of thousands of innocent Namibians were unalive. The mic drop moment, comparing the opinions of genocidal countries to Harvey Winston and Billy Cosby, chime in on issues to do with morality. And that's enough from Namibia. Now that we've set the stage with Namibia's powerful response, Let's dive into the first part of our breakdown, Germany's stance with Israel. But don't worry, we are not here to put you to sleep. Let's infuse a bit of humor into this serious topic, shall we? You know folks, the relationship between Germany and Israel is a bit like that complicated friendship where you accidentally broke your friend's favorite mug, but they forgave you because you promised to be their designated driver forever. Awkward, right? But in all seriousness, Germany's commitment to Israel stems from its historical responsibility for the edge coast. They are like the overprotective friend who promises to have your back no matter what. Germany is one of Israel's BFFs in Europe. Think matching friendship bracelets and all. They've got each other's trade and military backs. It's like Germany said, hey Israel, remember that time I messed up? Well, now I'm your biggest fan. It's almost heartwarming if it weren't for the geopolitical complexities. Now, let's fast forward to the drama of January 2020. The International Criminal Court, ICC, decides to investigate the occupied Palestinian territories. Cue the popcorn. It's getting intense. Palestine is all in, welcoming the decision and accusing Israel of, well, not the friendliest of things. You know, it's like the ICC dropped the truth and everyone all of a sudden is checking their alibis. Israel's like, who, us? Nah, we're just misunderstood. But hold on, Germany to the rescue. In December 2022, they swoop in as the third party, waving the flag of support for Israel. It's like they're the friend who always defends you in a group chat. Germany be like, hey ICC, you can't mess with my buddy Israel. Jurisdiction? Nah, that's a no-go. We're just here to keep things legally spicy. Now, the plot thickens. Germany's intervention didn't sit well with everyone. South Africa, another friend in this global party, accuses Germany of ignoring the 
Palestinian plight. It's like telling your friend they are not paying enough attention to the group selfies. And there you have it, Germany's stance on Israel with a touch of humor to lighten the geopolitical mood. Now that we've explored the first part of the breakdown, the online reactions to Namibia's bold stand, let's dive right in. Get ready for some intriguing developments. Namibia had a powerful response that left Germany reeling. Germany was prepared to support Israel in its ICC case, but Namibia had some compelling historical evidence to present. It's as if Namibia stepped into the spotlight and dropped some undeniable truths. Germany has some explaining to do. And not just about their snack preferences. We won't let those German pretzels distract us from this. Namibia shed light on the little known first G side of the 21st century. It was like they dusted off the history books and said, Germany, you can't sweep this under the rug. We see you. Germany, known for acknowledging past wrongs, suddenly found itself facing scrutiny. Namibia brought up the atrocities that took place between 1904 and 1908, and the world is just now discovering this historical bombshell. Now let's delve into the online reactions. The internet exploded with shock, memes and people realizing they missed a major plot twist in history. The online world was like, hold on, German did what in Namibia? I thought they were only famous for sausages and efficiency. Namibians wasted no time in calling Germany and reminding them of their dark past. The irony, Germany, a country that once paid reparations for the edge cost, now finds itself entangled in another historical dilemma. It's like Germany played the we have apologized before card, and Namibia responded with a yeah, but what about this other thing? It's like arguing with a friend who keeps bringing up that one embarrassing story from your past. And then there's South Africa stepping into the scene as the voice of reason, or perhaps the voice of unveiling some uncomfortable truths. They accuse Germany of disregarding the plight of Palestinians and question Germany's unwavering support for Israel. And South Africa is like, hey Germany, maybe it's time to broaden your international friendships. The world is a vast place. So there you have it, Namibia dropping truths, Germany caught in a historical crossfire, and the internet going wild. Namibia has some concerns about Germany, and it's more than just a difference in food preferences. In case you missed it, let's break it down in less than 90 seconds. Namibia is raising some valid points, reminding Germany that they can't claim the moral high ground when they have their own dark history. They are calling Germany for hypocrisy considering their past involvement in G-side and questionable actions in Namibia. It's like Namibia caught Germany off guard with a history lesson and said, wait, you did what in 1904? Let's not pretend we are unaware of the first G-side event you hosted on our soil. Namibia isn't just sharing information, they are presenting some hard truths. They are accusing Germany of ignoring the struggles faced by Palestinians and turning a blind eye to international law violations by Israel. Namibia's president is essentially telling Germany, hey, maybe reconsider your involvement in the ICC. It's like inviting your ex to mediate your current relationship issues. Probably not the best idea. In a nutshell, Namibia is urging Germany to address their own issues before getting involved in their affairs. Now let us dive into what this could mean for Germany and the rest of the world. Spoiler alert, it's not your average bedtime story. So Namibia is standing tall, telling Germany, hold the sauerkraut, we see your intervention at the ICC and we are not having it. But let's peek into the crystal ball for a sec. Could this be the beginning of a power shift on the world stage? Are the underdogs realizing they can be the top dogs? Namibia is not just calling out Germany for historical wrongs, they are throwing shade in the whole power dynamic script. It's like they are saying, hey Germany, you are not the only one who can flex diplomatic muscles. Namibia's move might just be a ripple in a pond, making other countries take a step back. Could this set a precedent? Are we witnessing a shift where smaller nations say, enough is enough, we've got a voice too. Picture this. Countries that were once in the shadows like Namibia, realizing they have the potential to shake things up. Is this a wake-up call for powerful nations to check their moral compasses? It's like a geopolitical reality check, and Germany is feeling the reverberations. Could this move by Namibia be a game-changer? Are we at the dawn of a new era where smaller players make big moves on the global chessboard? Namibia is not just making a legal point. They are raising eyebrows and making us wonder if this is a turning point in world affairs. So hold on tight, because the future might just be getting a makeover? Is Namibia the trendsetter in rewriting the rules? Or are we just witnessing a blip on a radar? Stay tuned folks, because this global game of chess is getting more interesting by the move. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, keep questioning, keep pondering and stay tuned.